Hi everyone. Okay, we're going to talk about index card tessellations. So to do this, I'm hoping that I sent everybody home with our index card. I think this is like a 3 by 5 If you wanted to do this activity with your students, you could even cut these in half and send them home with a half of a, an index card because they don't need this much space. In fact, if I use this much space and I'm trying to tile whatever I end up with on top of my... Um, my sheet of paper here, then I'm actually going to end up with, you know, not a lot of duplicates of this. I've seen people do this using construction paper, so then an, a regular small index card isn't so bad if you have a huge sheet of construction paper that you're trying to tile or te do tessellations over. Um, but for just a regular sheet of paper, if this would take up a lot of that space, right? So you could cut it in half and then do the activity with your students with half of an index card instead, and you'll get the same um, type of thing, okay? So for working with this activity, I just want you to have done one so that you can get the feel of it, and then if you wanted to use it in your future classroom, you could totally do that. You're going to need your index card, a pair of scissors, some way of taping pieces of index card together, so just regular scotch tape should do the trick. Um, a pencil maybe if you want to be able to, to draw what's going on here and some people might want some straight edges or um, curves or something like that that they can deal with. Okay, so I think I sent everybody home with the one with the grids on it. I just think that that might help you be able to um, figure out like, okay, I'm going to go from this one to that one, this grid to that grid, so on and so forth. So here's the idea, and it's pretty easy to follow. You pick a side. I'm going to pick this right-hand edge, and you decide what kind of shape or whatever you're going to cut out of it. So for instance, I think I'm going to make um, kind of a W shape coming out of this. So I'm just going to, I'm going to draw mine first. And then once I have mine drawn, I'll cut it out. So I'm going to make a bit of a W. So I want it to be similar on both sides. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six down, and one, two, three, four, five up. So I want it to be the same over here. So three, four, five, six down, and one, two, three, four, five up. I'm just going to make a little dot there so that I know how far I'm making my, my thing go in. Kind of like a Cartesian coordinate system. Okay. And then I see that I've got one, two, three, four, five um, grid squares in the middle of that. So I'm going to go two and a half, and I'm going to come out here. However far I want to go, I'm going to go three dots or three grids over, put my dot there, and I'll make the W. Okay, you can make whatever shape you want. You can make little Pac-Man out of this or, um, you know, pick, pick your poison, so to speak. The idea being that you just kind of make a, a, a crunch coming out of one side of your thing. So now that I've got my shape, whatever diagram you want to be, you can make a C here. That's why I said you might want to use your compass or your protractor and make curvy things. They don't have to be straight. It can be whatever shape you want. So, okay, I'm going to doo, 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 cut that guy out right along the lines. Now, you're going to use both pieces of this because we're going to conserve all of our area. So, I don't want to, I want to be careful not to like overcut or take out any pieces or anything like that because I want it all. I want to save all of my area. Just like most of the stuff that we do, we conserve our space, right? Okay, so this is the shark bite or whatever you want to think that I'm taking out of the right-hand side. And the idea is, without rotating or flipping or anything like that, I'm just going to slide it straight across, translate that piece, and I'm going to put it onto the left-hand side. So I'm just going to tape it on, add it together. I do want to make sure that my edges line up. So wherever my corner was there... Um, at the top needs to be where the corner is and I need my edges to be lined up very nicely as nicely as, as I can possibly make it because the idea is that I'm going to tape this on to the left hand side so whatever piece I took out of the right I'm going to add on to the left and I find whenever I'm doing this it helps if I'll actually flip it and tape it on both sides 
Oh, I didn't know it was dark, dirty on the back side. <laughs> but I'll flip it and tape it on the both sides so that when I move this thing around, it stays better. Okay, so I've taken whatever piece I took out on the right and I just moved it to the left. And the idea is that as I start making some tessellations, I'm going to um, trace around my figure, for lack of a better word. And whatever cutout is there, whenever I slide, now this is really only going to work for translation tessellations, but you can be really clever about it. And there are people who ha I've seen them... Um, do things so that they'll they'll be able to do rotations and other stuff too. So that's where the Escher art comes in place. Um, take a look at his stuff, go look at it. His reptiles are really impressive, the way that they fit into the, one one reptile's arm fits into the niche that's cut out by his, the other reptile's neck. It's really cool. So just go take a look at that. Anyway, the idea is, as I trace this, if I slide this guy over and trace him again, the pointy thing here will fit into the other piece. And you'll see that in a minute when I finish making my figure here. Okay, so I also want to do a similar thing to the top and bottom. So you can make it whatever you want to make it. I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to say... I'm going to freehand something. I'm going to pick it right here, and I'm going to start at the one, two, three, fourth grid. And I'm going to make it some wavy thing. I don't know. Just whatever, whatever I wanted to do. Okay. So if you don't want to do that, you can make it a bigger thing or a straight edge. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to demonstrate for us. So now I'm going to come in and cut out my shape whatever figure you wanted it to be. Some people, maybe you want to make a rocket ship. Maybe you want to make a, a fish. I don't know. So that's kind of part of the fun for your students is like once they're finished with it, oh, give me a second here. Once they're finished with it, maybe you have a student who says, oh, this is my submarine or this is my, you know, pilot jet or this is my fish, whatever it is. Um, and then they'll say, they'll draw in features for it. If this was a fish, I'd put an eye there and maybe a little fin here or something. So they do that to make sure it all looks good. Okay. Again, because this is a translation that I'm doing, I'm going to pick this guy up. I started it on the fourth grid here. So I'm going to make sure it lines up. And this is more difficult when you don't use the grids. That's why I tried to send you home with the grid ones. But you can do it with regular index cards too if, you, if that's all you have. I have done it with students with regular index cards and they survive. Okay, the difference being that they just have to be, you know, kind of eyeball it or maybe draw a perpendicular line or something to make sure that they're getting it as lined up as possible so that when they do it, it's going to... It's going to line up nicely inside the, the, the bump of one will line up in the hollow of the other. Okay, so again, I'm taping both sides so that my add-on piece here gets there. You could do extra little things. You can do a little V there or a little notch there or whatever. Um, so it's, it's fine to do those things. Just try to make sure that it lines up. You can do some shifting around, but you have to be super careful about it. All right, so this is my figure. I don't know, maybe it's a rocket ship. I don't know what it is. But the idea being that if I've done it correctly, I should be able to translate this piece up and down and side to side and be able to do a tessellation on this sheet of paper or a big construction paper or a poster board, whatever you want your students to do if you decide to do something like this. Okay, so I should be able to trace it. And I should be able to tile the entire page without, remember our little, what we said in class about tessellations, um, it's, it's only tiling the, the space if I don't have any gaps and I don't have any overlapping, right? So neither one of those things can happen in order for this to work properly. All right. So there's one version of my rocket ship. So as I slide this thing over, like I said, the front of the next rocket ship or whatever you want to call it should slide right in there and be as if I had traced it. 
So I should be able to actually trace around it. The lines there should go onto the piece of paper. It's in the right spot, so I'm good. Okay, and then come on over and trace the rest. Now, this one, like I said before, it's so big that it's going to, um, I'm only gonna get a couple, right, before I run out of space. So that's why you might wanna use half index cards with your kids, because that'll give them, uh, they can still do this just with less space taken up by one iteration or one image of their, whatever their cutout is. So I'm gonna put this guy also on the left. I'm gonna trace him, trace, trace, trace. These are the same lines, so they should be okay. Trace, 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 and there you go. All right, so you can see it's tiling left to right all the way across, and everything's fitting in nicely. So then the question is, will it tile up and down? And hopefully the answer is yes. So I've got this little dip coming down off of the bottom of my, my figure there, so it should fit nicely into the dip that I've created at the top of this guy. So I'm gonna line him up. Make sure that the lines are on the tracing lines, they all match up, and then I'll trace around. Oops. If only I could trace without getting far, far away from the object I'm tracing. It's really sad, I know, but it happens. <laughs> all right, so there he goes. Uh oh, there he goes. Um, you can see, yeah, that's good. You can see, I think, that he does indeed fit straight into the, the other well, so to speak. Um, that's just an over, overdraw. But it fits right in nicely. The next one will fit right here. So I'll be able to trace him there. So it does look like it is indeed going to tile this without overlapping and without, um, having any gaps, right? So, looks like we're good there. Now, there you go. What I started to say earlier is that depending on how you do it, like if you only, so there, there's my tessellation, yay. There's your whole big to-do. Um, depending on how I do it, like if I didn't take this top piece and put it on the bottom, let me, let me undo that real quickly. I'm just gonna cut it off and stick it back up on the top. Like if I only took a piece and from the back and put it on the front. Now, I don't know what this could be. I don't know, a shark or something. Okay, so if I only did that and I never took out that top piece. So depending on how you trace it, it doesn't have to be, you see how right here, because I have that top piece here and down in the bottom, and because it's very specific, um, if I had done like a jigsaw all the way across, Maybe I could I could line these up differently, but because it's a very specific swoop there, there's only really one way I can line the guy on the top up with the guy on the bottom, right? But if I did it carefully and either don't cut off the top or cut the top in such a way that it can be slid around, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, <laughs> Here we go. I don't think that one wants to, wants to trace for me. There we go. So if I did it really carefully and somehow the, the top and the bottom matched up, I could do weird things like offset it so I don't have to line it up directly on top and on the bottom like I did on the last one because this will line up anywhere, right? So I can kind of go halfway, so to speak. All right, something like this. And now, see, it's kind of offset, but whenever I draw the next guy in there, he'll still fit in. It's just that it's only gonna cover about half of the guy on top and below of him. Doo, doo, doo. So then whenever I come down to do the one underneath them, I can offset that again if I want to. So you can make some kind of cool patterns. Um, some of this more or less leads into quilting, which I mentioned to you guys the other day. 
So if you do any kind of quilting, or if your grandmother did quilting, or your mom, or whatever, um, then I actually had a male student a couple of semesters ago who who's who did his own quilting. So it can be guys, believe it or not. Um, but whoever, if somebody does this kind of quilting, you might have seen some patterns like this that kind of zigzag back and forth and make their own thing. So that's the idea behind the index card tessellation. The whole point of this activity is for you to see that not all of our tessellations, and these are just, the ones I've done are only translations, right? You can do this as a rotation, as a reflection, as a, a dilation, but every time you do something else, like rotate it or reflect it, you have to be even more careful of how you create this guy so that it'll fit nicely into the other piece. Um, but the idea being that this rocket ship or whatever you want to call it, fish, I don't know what, what he is, but whatever this thing is right here, um, is certainly not a regular polygon, right? So in our class day where we were doing tessellations, everything we did was pretty much a regular polygon. And I mentioned in class, oh, you can do it with not regular polygons, but we didn't get a, a chance to do that. So this guy, he's not even a polygon, right? He's just some weird shape. So he's not a polygon because he's got this curvy thing going on, right? But you could do it with not regular shapes. You just have to make sure that they fit into each other nicely. So like as I took this piece, I was very careful how I slid him over, right? I didn't take this piece and flip it over here or something. You can do some of that stuff, but it just requires way more thinking and way more process. So yeah, if this was a fish, I don't know what this is. If I was Escher, I would have planned this out more better, I'm sure. Maybe he has a little fin there or something. I know, go laugh at my drawing, it's okay. But yeah, if this is a fish, then I can duplicate it and whatever. So yeah, go, go Escher. He's way better artist than I am. But you can plan those things ahead and make something kind of interesting. I've seen some very interesting artwork come from even middle school students. Um, pretty, pretty young kids, fifth grade, sixth grade, that kind of thing that actually looked really, really neat. And they spent some time doing it. Um, I saw a really cool tessellation that ended up being a Texas flag. Okay. Cause they had done, it was all these little things that were tessellated in different colors, red, white, and blue. And it ended up, I think they were stars now that I think about it. And it ended up being the Texas flag. So it was really cool. Anyway, so there you go. There's an idea. Think about it. You don't have to use it, but if you like it, you're welcome to borrow it, seal it, use it in your classroom, whatever you want to do. All right. Thank you.